Ahoy Captain and welcome to this tool tutorial of the Fuel EU Excel Calculator. If you've purchased the Excel, we're very grateful for your purchase and make sure to leave us some feedback or contact us in case you have any need of clarification. And if you don't, well, hopefully you learned something during this video and maybe it even helps you to calculate Fuel EU greenhouse gas intensity for yourself it's a mouthful but oh boy fuel eu maritime is quite a lot to comprehend before we dive into the excel itself a few disclaimers from our part first of all the excel sheet itself is comprehensive but not complete that means that we don't have all your information or your data we are not your verifier or things like uh, traveling through eyes or non-compliant port calls are not included in this excel sheet so make sure to check all your information and always check with a verifier to make sure. Again, this Excel sheet gives you a very good estimate, but your verifier can deviate in some points because simply they have the better information. Secondly, it is a ship type, not ship specific. Always check to make sure that the things that are calculated here also apply to your ship. And lastly, it is definitely subject to change, not just fuel EU or maritime regulations in general, but also this Excel sheet, we try to constantly keep it updated. So check your version, check the guide or check all the material that we have on the website. And when in doubt or when you are in need of clarifications, always check the help desk. You can contact the help desk at any time. We are here to make your life easier, so do not hesitate to ass assist us. No. To let us assist you and so without further ado let's dive into the excel sheet and there's the beauty we are working in uh, version 1.06 at the moment this should be familiar this is of course the video that we are now recording uh, getting started downloading the guide we'll get there at the end because we'll first go through the different tabs that we have from from left to right so first the instructions, that well, that's where we are now getting started. An overview, that's where the magic happens, inputting of all the information that we have and getting the results. The fuel table, also very exciting stuff. That's where we uh, store information on all the different fuels, except for the biofuel pathways. That's where we store information on biofuels specifically, well to tank and LCV values. A uh, different tab where all the yearly penalties are calculated. Uh, ship data, that's where we get standardized data from, um, but you can always overrule it, of course. And then finally, the references, and especially a reference to the guide where all our information is basically stored. And then finally, a list with some um, explanations on the parameters used. These are coming directly from the regulation itself. Later on, I'll show you where they are coming from because it's easier to show there. And again, at any time, if you need help, simply contact the help desk here and we are there for you. So starting in overview, uh, the most beautiful sheet. No, they're all beautiful. So uh, we, we first have uh, input and output, very important uh, sheets and to the right of sheets, uh, different parts of the sheet tab actually oh, and then to the uh, right we have main engine and auxiliary engine uh, calculations so if we go from top to bottom we have ship main type where you can choose from and ship type if you select the uh, main type you can skip it it's merely for pre-populating some data especially fuel consumption you can always override the fuel consumption here uh, before you do make sure to uh, copy or make a, a copy of the uh, excel itself so just in case you break anything you can always go back as you can see here, we uh, use some quite complicated formulas from time to time uh, with named ranges, ranges. So you can go to formulas and then name manager to look up all the different parameters that we uh, use. Contact the help desk if you have any uh, need of clarifications here, of course. So uh, the benchmark year, that's, uh, or the compliance year, that's the year at which you want to calculate greenhouse gas emissions, total time spent in the EU. Main fuel type, as you can see here, we have all the different fuel types uh, listed uh, from um, the regulations. We'll cover that later. Same applies to the auxiliary engines. Basically what we do is we combine two different uh, fuels, put them together for the single vessel overview. And if you pick a, a biofuel, so let's do it, HVO, then here you can see the biofuel pathway chosen and also the biofuel well to tank CO2 equivalent. 
you can override this one here so if we see the right hand side so we have 45.8 as it is hydro treated vegetable oil from rapeseed um, hbo let's see 45.8 yeah so in case you have uh, something else that has a uh, 10 tank to wake then you can override it uh, there that's something that's uh, explained more explicitly in the guide so make sure to check it out if you have any questions there i'm gonna change it back to uh, hfo uh, fuels are the same but basically we have just two to choose from and then they are combined later on reward factor for the wind that you can uh, pick if you have any and amount of megajoules per year in terms of shore power and all the results are provided here with the penalty as well uh, in here well these are quite complicated formulas well this is okay this is getting more complicated here you can see it's a lot we simply input these formulas uh, here and if you have a look it's basically for main and auxiliary the different factors um, everything is here explained calculated etc we also have some tool tips to the right so you can look up what everything means uh, again it's simply the uh, formula that you see here from nx1 and we calculate it over there and then at the bottom is some additional input this should not have to be changed uh, but uh, we've noticed that there are differences in uh, greenhouse warmth potential between regulations and these are updated from time to time so make sure to check it out i'm pretty confident reduction factors will remain the same but who knows in a few years and finally reward factors as well these should be fixed but you never know for sure so this is where all the calculations happen and we already saw a few of the um, uh, biofuel pathways fuel data that was taken um, penalties etc so uh, let's move on to the second uh, tab the fuel table tab and here we go all the fuels listed as per fuel eu regulations so tiny we can barely read it so let's zoom in a little that's better on the left hand side first column we have all the fuels fuel classes low calorific values and then moving on all the different uh, parameters defined as per the regulation with on the right hand side here an estimate uh, please have a look make sure that it's also according to your calculations uh, correct so we have estimate until when roughly you can use the different fuels given the current um, reduction factors that you can see here and we've also included a reward factor of uh, two for the different RFNBO, so the renewable fuels non-biological origin please note there are uh, a lot of things that you need to check yourself especially when it comes to biofuels and RFNBOs, or maybe not yourself uh, but the uh, fuel supplier or the verifier because there are a lot of values that are uh, not listed to be measured uh, blah 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 etc so and these values we have in some cases assumed or taken to be averages of all the biofuel classes or especially here in terms of uh, rfmbos what's listed officially is that when you have a value that's na or to be measured you should take the highest value in the column of uh, your fuel class so but that means for for example these two values elpg edme these have uh yeah these are not listed na so you should take the highest value which is 0.12 for the lower calorific value and that's of course hydrogen and that's certainly not the case for these types of fuels so what we've done we've taken some liberty and well took some assumptions here and there so please check and if you have a fuel determined always uh, check it out together with either verifier or your fuel supplier to make sure that these values from that row here listed are correct and also confirm the values that you have for fossil there are more values that are fixed but for biofuels and rfmbos uh, basically every different batch can have a different uh, well to tank value etc so it's a lot of information but what we do is we use this so this is basically the information taken from the regulation and we input it in the calculations in the overview i'm going to show you later on in the guide uh, where we get that information from moving on to biofuels pathways this here 
This is taken from RED, Renewable Energy Directive, and there are all different kinds of pathways for different kinds of biofuels have been listed. We've taken the liber liberty to um, take a fuel type or list each different row listed in RED as a fuel type for fuel EU. Some are, mm, no, not assumptions, but uh, there could be uh, fuels not listed in this list that you can use, of course. Your fuel supplier might come up with who knows what. Uh, so also there you need to have a check to see if the uh, typical greenhouse gas emissions uh, well to tank are similar to those that you are going to use. And we also have uh, the lower calorific values for these different uh, biofuels that we assume. Please check them out as well and make sure that they are correct here and in the overview. Uh, let's see here, biofuel well to tank CO2 equivalent. That's it for all the fuels. Let's move on to yearly penalties. So this is the yearly penalties tab. I always want to say the best one, but certainly not the best one, the strictest one from 2025 to 2050. So that's 25 years off in this case penalties. Uh, let's zoom in to see what we calculate here. So we have the reduction factor as per the regulation resulting greenhouse gas intensity target. The compliance balance calculated as per the uh, below um, formulas and then the resulting penalty uh, that is also stated uh, here additionally there is a penalty multiplier for each consecutive year that you have a compliance balance deficit the penalty multiplier um, is increased that you see here and these are simply ways to calculate whether or not uh, you have a uh, deficit deficit for multiple years multiple consecutive years or not so you can um, hide these if you don't want to or remove them if you don't want the penalty multiplier or hide them uh, if you don't care uh, that's listed here uh, from the different regulations and also here please note that banking borrowing and pooling have not been taken into account but you could do it uh, manually here as well uh, so this is the uh, general table for all the different penalties and the penalties are uh, calculated here and if we take the benchmark year to be 2030 then it simply takes the yearly penalties from 2030 that you see uh, there yeah that's correct so that's it for uh, yearly penalties moving on to ship data this tab well can be omitted to some extent because uh, we simply take uh, some ship types mentioned by uh, fuel EU well not necessarily it's just uh, carrying cargo or passengers so that should be all these ship types these should all be omitted for the time being and we take uh, main and fuel type uh, sort of standard values but if you override them in the overview tab then this all doesn't matter for a bit so uh, you can have a look and uh, play around and see uh, what we have in terms of averages uh, uh, fuel in fuel consumption for different ship types but uh, if you have your own ship yeah, don't mind moving on to uh, references also an important one why because in the references we show you the different uh, sources that we use but also uh, the guide itself which can be very handy if you need more information let me show you so in this guide, the Fuel EU Maritime Guide that we made, all the information that we know is uh, stored here and uh, all the different sources that we use, the calculations, everything is uh, in this single PDF that's free for you to download. So there are some benchmark calculations here. How we do all the calculations is explained. Uh, not just greenhouse gas, but also penalties, uh, the explanations on the biofuels and RFMBOs and things that we stated, uh, penalties, everything is included, plus at the end, the different uh, frequently asked questions and here references that we use, all of the references and uh, with some more explanations in the annexes. So everything should be included here and this is all uh, regularly updated as soon as we have new information and the time, everything that we know will be updated here in the view you guide so closing this even if you don't have the latest version this link should always um, get you to the latest version we always store it under the same name so if you click here you always get the last version of 
the guide and information. And that concludes the tutorial for now. There's only one more thing left to say. Contact the help desk in case you need any help at all. Our goal is to make your life easier, not harder. We hope this Excel helps you on your journey towards sustainability. But again, it can be hard. It was and is also hard for us. So please contact the help desk if you need any more assistance or help from us. That's it. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the Excel sheet and have a great day.